Hey everyone, it's Clayton here, and today I am just making a quick video of how to set up and care for your axolotls. So this is just a pretty basic video. I'm just going to show so what you sh what you're going to need to do when you get them home, and I don't know, just what you're going to need to feed them and what temperature you should keep them at, etc. So quick, I'll just start quickly with uh, what you're going to want to do when you get them home. So as you can see, I have a rather, this is a, a 40 gallon tank I believe, and then all I did was take some sand, it's uh, almost like sand, it's, uh, you can get it from the pet store, it's very very like fine fine pebbles, and that's what you're going to want to use. Uh, you, can, you can use no substrate at all, I just, I used a, uh, the sand just so that some of the crap and stuff will, uh, just doesn't build up as quickly. And then I just have some plants and then a hide. Uh, I use a breeder uh, pump on this side. This is just for a filter. It's a breeder filter. Uh, I don't know if you got how well you can see it, but it's pretty much just like a filter that goes under the water. These are the ones I would recommend getting for your axolotls. Um, I'm also running an actual filter on this side. Uh, but when you use these filters, you're going to want to have them pump out very slowly because axolotls don't like fast moving water. Uh, it'll stress them out if it's moving really fastly. Uh, what else? I don't know. So exactly, you can also, when you're putting them into the uh, the tank, what you're going to want to fill it with is just water, regular, uh, regular tap water. You can also get like super crazy with it, but I personally just use regular tap water and then just add some, uh, some, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, whatever. The crap that you add to it, and it'll make your, uh, the chlorine and other, like, heavy metals and stuff like that will be removed. And, uh, I just use that, and they seem to be fine every time. There's, like, a whole bunch of, like, pH and all that crap you can check, but I don't get into that, and they seem to be doing fine without it. Uh, you can if you want to, but personally, I wouldn't bother. I also have a screen in the middle just to separate them, because these guys are much larger than my other one. You can see how big these guys are, and then I have this guy was the one that uh, I made a video for on how to save an axolotl. Uh, he was floating, he was floating at the top of the tank, he was floating like at the top, and then I couldn't get him down to the bottom. So I just put him in the fridge at 6 degrees, and uh, he eventually started uh, coming back, and as you can see, he's perfect now. Um, yeah, I don't know, what else you're going to want to do is, I also use like, just some crap that will, uh, just reduces the frequency of water changes. It'll like break down their poo and stuff like that, and leftover food, and just make it just makes the build up uh, a little bit slower. And then you're just gonna want to add some basic stuff for them to hide behind. They they will be a little bit stressed out if you don't give them any hides. And then for food, I just use a basic uh, frog newt and tadpole bits. You're gonna want to get ones that sink to the bottom because they don't really uh, they don't really uh, friggin, like, eat off the top, I don't know, they don't eat in the middle, they don't eat off the top, they only eat off the bottom, they're pretty much only bottom feeders, you can get them to eat off the top, but it's pretty rare, um, yeah, this is just the same thing, shrimp pellets, same basic thing, but, uh, the best actual diet for them would be, like, a salmon, salmon feed, for, if, uh, you're, like, farming salmon, but most people aren't gonna be able to get that type of feed, so, I don't know, you can just use basic tad, uh, newt and tadpole bits, and that that should be more than enough. Uh, what else? So yeah, I don't know, you're just going to want to keep the water flow rather low, like if it's, you don't want heavy water flow because their gills will, like, go start bending forward, and you'll see that they're stressed out, they'll just be bugged. Uh, I also, right now, my temperature in here is at like 22, 23, well it's actually at 22, it should be, 23. 23. Okay, never mind. It's at 23 right now. It was at 22 earlier, but uh, it usually stays around, around like 22, 24, in between there. Uh, most. Uh, I also did have it warmer. It was up at like 25, 26. It was probably even up at like 28 sometimes, and that's when my little guy started floating. So I don't know. If you get it too, too hot, they can definitely start having problems with their digestion. Uh, so you can keep them super cold though, you can bring it all the way down to like 5 or 6 degrees and they'll, they can sit in that, and it'll just slow down the, the rate that they grow at. The warmer it is, the quicker they grow. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much just about it. 
if there's any other questions that you guys have, then by all means, send me a, a comment or whatever, and I'll be sure to answer it. So yeah, I don't know. This is uh, pretty basic. These guys do also glow under a black light. They're, uh, they have the glow protein in them. At least, well, I have one golden albino. He doesn't have that glow protein, but the others do. So yeah, I don't know. That's about it. So uh, thanks for watching, and comment, rate, subscribe. There's my golden albino. Kind of see him. That's the other little guy. And then I have, I know for sure I have a male and a female in here that are large, so I'm definitely going to be able to breed them soon as well. So I can probably, I'll probably add a video later on, like giving just some basic information on how I bred them and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe.